preachers that are afraid about what I'm getting ready to talk about. And it ain't as much about what goes on in the church as much as what's going on out in the world. And there's a lot of evil and wicked things that's going on. The title of today's message is Satan is the God of this world. He is the God and the influencer over this world system. Okay? Like it or not, that's Bible. You know, I said something the other day on Facebook. Somebody says, Satan ain't no God. He's just a fallen angel. I said, well, people have idol gods. And it's gods to them. And whoever you yield your members to, that is your God. And there are many false gods, but there's only one true God. Not two, not three, but the Bible says one. Okay? Alright, we're going to start 2 Corinthians 4, 1-10. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, 1-10. Paul's right here, he says, Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we faint not. Nothing is going to scare us, nothing's going to run us off. But have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty. Things that are hidden and dishonest, we are going to bring them to light. Oh, now you're judging. Oh, you're saying that. No. If it's something in the secret society, come on, don't let this hurt you. Secret society and a lot of dishonesty, the Apostle Paul says we renounce it. <coughs> Not walking in craftiness, nor handling the Word of God. <coughs> Deceitfully. People have the Bible. They are reading it. Parts out of it. But they are being deceitful with the word of God. It kind of reminds me of a story in the Bible. When there was this witch. That just kept bothering Paul. And everywhere Paul. Yeah whatever he says. I'm with it. Yeah. And Paul got tired of her. On his tail and everything, he turned around and looked at her. I rebuke you, Satan, in the name of Jesus Christ. Wind up baptizing her, and she became a saint of God. Okay? So the devil's always out there. He's to and fro, he made a vow. But she was handling the word of God deceitfully because her wizard above her, they were making a lot of money. See, there's a lot of religious organizations that's in it for the money. Okay? And religious organizations that's in it for the money is evil. Come on. If you're not in it for the love of God, get out of it. Or you're handling the word of God deceitfully. But by manifestations of the truth, committing ourselves to every man's conscience and the sight of God. But if our gospel be hid, it is hidden to them that are lost. Well, this makes a lot of people mad. This, this right here almost makes people as mad as God heareth not a sinner. Sinners don't like that. Oh, he hears me. No, he, he's listening to somebody else that knows God, but he sure ain't hearing you. He knows you're doing it, but he's not acknowledging your prayers. Okay? God there is not a sinner, but him who worship and doeth his will, him he heareth. Okay? Verse 4 says, In whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine in them. So there's only one that wants to hide Jesus from the world, and that's the old devil, Lucifer. 
fallen angels. For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus, the Lord. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. Come on. There's only one Lord. And we preach ourselves, we do not preach ourselves, but Christ Jesus, the Lord. And ourselves, your servants, for Jesus' sake. See, I am your servant. I'm not to be, you know, some pastors and preachers and leaders, they like to be holier than thou. And they like to have their ring kissed or bow down to them and all these things. And don't you know who I am? You know, I am this or I am that. But I'm a servant. I am your servant. You call upon me, I am to serve you. You don't serve me, I serve you. For God, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, has shined in our hearts to give us the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have the, this treasure, an earthly vessel, that we ex excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. See, there are some people that they'll be in the works of some kind of miracle and because they use the name of Jesus Christ and there's a miracle happens because they use the name of Jesus Christ, they'll say, see what I did? I laid hands on my boy. It was just shouting on. I laid hands on him. They went out passed out like somebody turned or switch up. Did you see what I did? See, these are false apostles, preachers, false doctrines and all that stuff because without Christ Jesus I am nothing but through him I can be all things that he wants me to be but it's not of myself least any man should boast but because of the grace of God because of his mercy okay verse 8 oh, in the ministry and walking with Christ we are troubled on every side. Yeah, we are. Yet not distressed. I got trouble out there. People make fun of me. Don't stress me. It's on you, not me. Oh, that, the brother over in Africa was talking today. He says, they think us oneness people are some kind of evil cult or just a cult. That's what he said. That's why you'll have that. <laughs> You'll have that, you know. Because the Bible says we are a peculiar person. We are a peculiar people. We're not like the rest of the world. And then the rest of the world looks at us and is like, y'all, weird. Yeah. I got some science behind this too here in a minute. We are perplexed, but not despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. Always bearing about in the body, always remembering and thinking about in our bodies the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our bodies. Okay? You know, I know I'm not trying to cause any problems or anything like that, but Jesus says, as often as you do this, you do this in remembrance of me. We are always to be in remembrance of Jesus' death, burial, and the resurrection. Because guess what we're going to do? We're going to be in the death, burial, and the resurrection. It starts off the first death, burial, and resurrection is right here in the tank. Getting baptized in Jesus' name. Shows the death and the burial and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. But it's hidden to them that are lost. If somebody says, oh, you don't need that, then they're blinded to it. Who blinded them? The devil blinded them. It says it's not necessary. It's not important. And that's what the devil's saying. Alright? Now, renounce them the hidden things. We've got a little exercise. I want to get uh, Brother Dave and Brother Ed. I didn't tell you guys this. Come on. I can call you because you guys are deep, right? <laughs> okay. okay. Oh. Now, Brother Dave, I got 50 cents here. And I'm going to put it right here. Who does that 50 cents belong to? Technically, everything belongs to God. But it came out of my pocket. So, I have the ownership right now of this. It's right there. Now, Brother 
okay, this is what I want you to do. I want you to come and pick up this 50 cents in a slow motion and give it to Brother Ed. And all the time that you're stepping up here, getting it and giving it to him, I want you to say, I'm not taking this. I'm not stealing from you. I'm not taking your 50 cents. You'll find out. Just say it. I'm not stealing. I'm not taking it. Now give it to him. Hey, Brother Dave! You didn't say that, man! I'm going to give the whole thing. <laughs> now I'm going to say, hey! <coughs> I just saw you take that 50 cents. No, I didn't? No, really? I don't have it. You're, 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 you're hitting right on cue. Prove it!
because he knew too many names. Okay? This is not a video, and I ain't afraid of it. Bill Gates has got enough money, he can have me snuffed out before I uh, get out. Hey, don't know what I'm getting in there. I've zeroed out. Do you think I'm fit? Do you think I'm afraid of Bill Gates? Do you think I'm afraid of the Clintons? People that was involved in the Clintons, a lot of the cover up before he became president, most of them somehow or another died. <laughs> they died. They just, I don't know how they died, they're just gone. One of them was in a plane wreck. Look how many people had to die to cover up the darkness. But the Bible says where there is darkness, light will come in and reveal the darkness. You can't hide from God. Okay? You can't hide from God. Now, the exercise of the quarter was, they actually did it, and the evidence, and the fact check, Chapter say that what I just read to you and what I heard on the video and other things, that's not true. It's not true. <laughs> we sat here and did it. Now, did Dave steal my 50 cents? Yes or no? Yeah. Well, with my permission, he did. Okay. But it's just an exercise of what goes on in this world. Yeah. Well, we'll have a repentance time for him and Ed after this is over. <laughs> They followed instructions. And they did great. They did great. Uh, let's go to 2 Peter 3, 3 to 7. Satan is the god of this world. Alright? Somebody says, well, we'll never get any justice as long as, you know, we have crooked leaders. Well, leaders are crooked because their god is the devil. Crooked leaders. Now, we got some good leaders in this world. We got righteous leaders. Boy, we got some crooked ones too. And they are liars. They are thieves. They deny. And then and here's the thing. They both do bad things and they point their finger at each other, saying, look what they done. And whoever has the brightest light on their evil doings is usually sometimes the, the one that makes the other look bad or not. But 2 Peter 3. Do I believe that we are in the last day? No, not the last day. We are not in that period. Some people, oh, Jesus can come any time. He can come any time for me. But there are things that has to be fulfilled before his coming. There's two things Jesus can't do. What is it? What are they? Lies will not, but what's the other thing Jesus can't do? He can't change his plan. He will not change his plan. He will not say that repentance and baptism in Jesus' name is the way to get your name in the Lamb's Book of Life. And then say, oh, I'm going to change my mind. See, he's not going to do that. There's a plan of salvation that's been laid that will not change. You can't change it. People might change it, and they're going to be on the short end of the stick, so to speak. <coughs> Second Peter 3. This is talking about the coming of Christ. How long has the coming of Christ been in operation? Since Jesus died. And even before that, it was told about Jesus dying in the Garden of uh, in the Garden of Eden. The prophecy. So the coming of the end has actually began on day one. There was a day one. Before day one was eternity. God stopped eternity and he created and started time. And time started, there was Adam and Eve. And time is going to come to an end, to the last day, and from there on is going to be eternity. So there's this time frame that we're dealing with right now till the end of time. Till there'll be no more time. Three, verse 3 says, Knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days. See, there's a difference between the last day or the day of the Lord and days. That S is plural, means many. Right? More than one. In the last 
today's scoffers walking after their own lust. Okay? And say, where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. See, I even read it. See, if I can't read what I preach, then I need to quit preaching, right? Amen? All right. Now, this up here, saying that the, uh, the scoffers, scoffers, what is a scoffer? Walking after their own lust. These are monstrous men who will seem wise by the contempt of God and wicked boldly. They're not ashamed to do wicked things. They're bold with it. They don't care who sees it. Okay? Right now there's still a little cover. Not much, but on some of the things going on that island and things like that. Alright? But they're after their own lust, their own desires of what they want to do. Alright? Verse 5. For this, they willingly are ignorant of, they, they, they want to be dumb. Anybody here wants to be dumb, raise your hand. Because we're going to be talking in the office when we're done. <laughs> Nobody wants to be dumb. Everybody wants to know. Everybody wants to be a little bit on the smart side. So let us not be willfully ignorant of that by the word of God, the heavens were of old, and the earth standing out of the water and in the water, whereby the world that was being overflowed with water perished. I asked somebody the other day, how many times has earth been under water, according to the word of God? Well, once, Noah, uh, twice, Satan. See, this world was covered by water. And anybody knows anything about the universe and where the earth is and the universe? We're on the other edge. We're on the outside edge of the universe. And Jesus said, I beheld Satan as a bolt of lightning descended from heaven to earth. And he was thrown here and it was nothing but dark and cold and wet and no land. So Satan and all of his angels was cast here. And they couldn't walk on water, by the way. They are pretty miserable. How long are people going to be floating and swimming in this stuff? Yes, treading water for who knows how long in, the, in darkness. There was no light. And God's anger against Satan says, now you took one third of the angels. Now I'm out of my turf. Now I'm coming on the turf that I gave you and I'm going to reap some really fine people off that rock called earth. And he reached his hand, well, well actually when he just came from the other side of the universe where Hubble and everything says there's this, this black wall. They can't go beyond it. The third heaven. That's far, far away. Hubble can't get it. Okay? So when God came from there over to the other side, and the Genesis says, and then there was light. There was light three days before he created the sun. Because he was the light. And he shined upon the deep, and he made this earth. He made a, a kind of like a paradise called the Garden of Eden, okay, for man to live in. They didn't know sin. Okay? Didn't know sin. And now here we are today. Boy, do we know sin. Do we know sin. But the heavens and the earth, which are now, by the same word, are kept and stored, reserved into fire against the day of judgment. Notice the S is gone. The day of judgment. And perdition of ungodly 
ungodly men. Okay? These are ungodly men that's ruling this world, and their God was the devil. Okay? Nobody likes to see something unjust. Nobody. Jesus doesn't like to see the works of the unjust. Because his word tells us that it's not his will that any perish, but that all come to repentance. That all, he likes everybody to go to heaven. That's why the scripture says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. He doesn't want nobody to go to the lake of fire. But yet the word of God tells us that this is reserved for the ungodly men and women that chose the God of this world, say, to follow after their own lust, to make it easy on them. 2 Timothy 3, 1 to 17. You going to read all that? Uh, we'll see. 2 <laughs> Timothy 3, 1. Now, we heard, do this first. Right? The beginning of that? For this at first, and it says, Know this also, that in the last days, perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy. Boy, that uh, thing there about the parents... Boy, that has run rampant from when I was a child to what's going on now. I can see it, you know, from generation to generation, it just gets worse. I seen on Facebook, said, uh, what happened to you when you was a child if your parents saw you rolling your eyes back out? <laughs> Whoa! Heavy from on high came down. Don't you dare roll your eyes at me! Yeah, woke up on Wednesday. Alright? I remember one time, I wasn't rolling my eyes at my mom. I was just looking away. And she thought I was rolling my eyes and got in trouble. I got a whip. Yeah, I did. I did, I did. Because my parents says, when I'm talking to you, I want you to look at me. You look in my eye because I want to make sure you understand what I'm saying. Alright. It's showing the times that we're in. It's worse now than it was before, but guess what? It's going to get even worse. The Bible talks about sons and fathers and mothers and mothers all against each other, turning each other in. Mom made me mad. I'm going down and say, they're having Bible study on a Tuesday night and get them put in jail. That'll teach them to make me mad. Some of the things that goes on, and even with Adriana, it's like, that should not happen. I embarrassed her in, in Sunday school because they looked at her and said, you said that to him? She got mad at me the other day. You are not my dad. You are not my papa. And you are not my boss. And you don't tell me what to do. I can do what I want. Oh, yeah, exactly. But you know what? We were all born that way. Did you know that? But the Bible says train that child in the way they should go. And it will not depart from them. So we're going through some training time. Well, Ed knows what some training times is. Although I never had a lot of trouble out of Betty and Monica. You know, I, and I, you know, my dad said I was too hard on them. But they turned out to be pretty good people to be so hard on them. Betty and Monica, when they're, when they're in their walker going around, they didn't touch things on the table. And for him, smack, whoa. Every time I do that, that hurts. So the smart, intelligent man who says, I'm not going to do that anymore because it hurts. Man, you shouldn't really hurt your children. Yes, the devil. The devil in this system is telling people how to raise their children, and it's in the bad 
handsome. So then when Eddie Market grew up and then the children and they're coming to the house and then her walker and, and Kathy goes around and starts picking up the knickknacks. I said, what are you doing? Well, I got knickknacks down here I don't want them to touch. I said, you put them right back down there. And if they touch them, they will get smacked just like Eddie and Monica did. Because I'm responsible for them too. I smacked them a couple times. Sometimes a few people might not be real happy about it, but I did it with love. And pretty well it turned out to be pretty good. You know? So, children are very valuable. Some, I don't even like to use the word asset, but children are the church of today, not the church of tomorrow. They're very important. They're it is. It is. And that's the best that's inheritance that you can leave your children is the word of God, because it's the word of God that's the sword against the God of this world, and that's Satan. Amen? Amen. How do I fight Satan? I don't know how. Well, if you don't know how to fight Satan, you're going to lose. See, I know how to fight Satan. Right here. I can tell him by the power of God to get behind me, get under my feet, get out of my way. I rebuke you. And he's got to go. Alright. It says, Here, uh, Unthankful, unholy, without natural effects, callous. What would make me cry when I was a child? Don't even affect a lot of children today. Who'll be watching something? Of course, Adriana, she's there, she's in that training thing. I'll be watching something and tears coming down my eyes. She goes, What well, don't you tap on? Don't see what's going on there. Then I'll explain it to her. Okay? Truth breakers, false accusers, incontents, fierce despisers of those that are good, traitors, heavily, high-minded. These high-minded people that think they are, they know it all. Did you know I've got like four years in college? You didn't even go through the college door. And I am so much smarter than you. I know so much. You just don't understand. See, that's, that sounds like it came right out of Bill Gates' mouth. Correct. Now, there's wisdom and knowledge that's good that they can get from college, but there's a lot of it that's bad, such as evolution. Okay? Uh, lovers of pleasure more than the lovers of God. Having the form of godliness, but denying the power thereof, from such turn away. There's a lot of people that claim to be Christians, okay? But they deny the Holy Ghost. I've said this a, a lot, and I always get a kick out of it. Uh, Monica was at a Catholic wedding. They was talking about church and everything. Monica goes, whew, what if I get the Holy Ghost? Oh, don't do that. <laughs> Not in here. They'll throw you out. Because she was in the Catholic church. See, they don't like spiritualism. They don't like praising God and waving hands and stuff like that. And it's not just them. I went to churches, and Brother Evans used to talk about it. He said, you go to some churches, and it says, you, like you went to a funeral. Just so quiet. Just, you feel like you got log chains on you. You know, there's no, where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty. Come on. And that's what, that's what uh, Bill Gates is trying to do, is take away your liberty. He's trying to change your mind. Or this guy that looked, talk in that interview that looked like Bill Gates. Okay? A lot of people stand behind Bill Gates. You know what blinds people more than anything? Money. Money will blind people's eyes. They won't see it. Cops do it. Lawyers do it. Judges do it. Come on. Politicians do it. They give them a payoff and say, I didn't see that. I didn't know what happened. Because they got the Bible says that the love of money is the root of all evil. I told Adriana, and the usual reason I use her is because I'm an active with her right now. Okay? Money is like a shovel. It is a tool that you use. 
You should not respect that money any more than a shovel. Then can you imagine trying to get a quarter and uh, uh, dig a ditch? <laughs> you know, that's just uh, take you a long time, a long time. So there's the right tool for the right job, and money right now buys us groceries, keeps the light bill and everything else, so it's an instrument. Some people have a bigger tool shed than others, but it's still a tool. But when people get to the point where they love the money, some of the people, it becomes a hobby to make more money. Okay? And those people have needs. Okay? Uh, and of this sort, they are which crept in the house and led captive silly women and silly men. I ain't changing the word because I've seen some silly men too. Laden with sin, led away with their divers lost. Here it is, another scripture that a lot of people don't like. Ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. What's the truth? Jesus Christ. He said, I am truth. People don't know who Jesus is. They are willfully being blinded. Okay? Uh, let's go to same chapter. Verse 16. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Okay? Right here it is. You got a problem going in your life? Right here is in here is the antidote. And if it ain't going away, Maybe you're doing something wrong. Maybe God's waiting on you. Or maybe God is teaching you patience. That's between you and God. See, Job was judged, wasn't he? By his friends. Got so bad. Job says, well, friends like you, I don't need no friends. I'm paraphrasing that. Okay? Because his very friends is like, man, you guys are like my enemy coming up against me. Do you know, don't you remember me? That the man of God may be perfected through finished and to all good works. Let's get rid of that works because you don't have to do no works. The devil has slid that into places called churches that there is no works. There is a work. And it's a good work. And it's a fight. Okay? So just remember, when all this is going on, remember, who's the God in this world? Satan. Okay? Now, when it comes to being fearfulness, Matthew 10, 28 says, Fear not man that can destroy your body, but fear God who can destroy both body and soul, because man can't destroy your soul. Don't be afraid. <laughs> When I put things on Facebook, it's not for people to be afraid. I just want people to be aware of where we're at and what's going on. If I'm driving behind Brother Dave and I see a taillight out, I'm just like, well, I'll just keep calling him until he gets pulled over by a cop and gets a ticket and say, oh, by the way, uh, you got a taillight out. No! If you see something wrong, you say, Brother Dave, you got a taillight. Don't get it fixed. You might get a ticket. Thanks for telling me, or I knew it. You see what I'm saying? We're watchmen. Let's tell people what's going on. Alright? So I hope you got something out of this message. Don't be afraid. 